here I am at my age, I'm still getting, getting uh, scammed. So it can happen. And this was the only rust area I could see on the eBay pictures. This was the only, th only part that actually showed up on the pictures on eBay. And I asked him about that. We'll talk about that later. I'm to tell you everything bad about the car, which is, I think in Salesman 101 school, they tell you not to do that. So I didn't go to that school. No, there's no cup holders in this car. I hope the guy will give me my money, my money back. All right. So I um, I don't know how this is going to be sequenced. I've already filmed. We've already uh, filmed. We don't actually use film. It's a digital program, but uh, they say filmed for some reason. So we have uh, already recorded the undercarriage of the car, and I showed you the rust spots. Hello everybody, how's it going? Today we're in the driveway of When Butter Cars Are Built. And I'm here to show you a 1970 Riviera. We're going to start out, getting my finger out of the way, we're going to start out with the undercarriage to see if there's any really any structural problems with the car. You can see the pinch weld on the driver's rear quarter is all intact and good. Obviously, the bumper bolts have been replaced. Probably the bumpers have been uh, taken off at one time. The spare tire well looks good. You can see the surface ruts on the... Uh, on the frame because typically the paint on the frame comes off very quickly on a car as it ages. Here's the gas tank and the straps. You can see the factory undercoating is still intact. No problems. On this side we can see that the pinch weld on the passenger side rear quarter all intact. Problem here is this exhaust hanger needs to be replaced because it rattles against the body. And whenever you start the car or shut it down, you'll, you'll hear up. <laughs> so that's what that noise is. Later when you hear that, if, if, if you hear that, when we get the car running for you. It's got, look up here, yeah, it appears, looks like air shocks on here, but I don't see any compressor on this car. Again, with the surface rust on the frame. The brakes have been redone with new linings, new uh, wheel cylinders. I mean, that was done just uh, last month before I bought the car. Or two months ago, I should say. You can see that the, uh, the sheet metal looks good back here. Now looking at the pinch well now on the uh, passenger side, the body. All oh, that's intact, not rusty. A little bit of a uh, little bit of uh, rust coming through on this seam. That's probably the only thing that would come close to structural damage on this car. Is that area right there? Not rust through, but you can see it. The moisture of that seam is starting to uh, show some rust. The rest of the floorboard here. A little bit of peeling there. A 
The exhaust is newer, of course, not. I don't believe it's original, but it does need hang uh, at least to take care of that one rattle. That's the only place where it's really a problem. Here's the front floorboard area. Going deeper here. Going up here to the uh, the front of the car where the firewall meets the floorboards. You can see some uh, old seepage and road dirt. This car has been parked for two days in this spot and there are no drips on the ground. You see some dirt. <laughs> I didn't clean, I didn't clean underneath there. It had rained the last couple of days, but. Back on the driver's side. Again at the floorboards. Pinch weld. Back at the floorboards again. Looking at the pinch weld. Towards the back of the car. Just don't see any real Looks like someone might have tried to jack the car up here on this floorboard. Probably hammer that back down. This is the last year for the X-frame on the Revere's. There's the um, carrier bearing for the two-piece drive shaft. Everything is pretty much original. Even the shocks are original. The spiral shocks in the front. These non-hooked up air shocks in the back for the load leveling. All the other aspects of that system is missing. So it would be appropriate, I think, just to go ahead and put conventional gas shocks on this car. Now I'm going to show you um, the body and the brust problems. First of all, talking pinch welds again. My favorite subject Pinch today. welds on the doors look good. You can see that the bottom of the door looks clean. Pinch welds looking good. The drain hole um, grommets are all missing. But see, even the drain holes are not rusting out. Drivers on the store. <laughs> okay, we got the pinch welds and the, oh, I wish I could get it focused here. <laughs> oh, here we go. The underneath of the car door on the driver's side. Sometimes it focuses and sometimes it wants to show you my house. There should be a manual focus on these things. Looks good. And now the sad news and the bad news. Really. You can see that this trim, instead of finding the right fasteners, they drilled holes and put three screws in it. <laughs> Here is uh, an area of external panel rust bubbling through just above the driver's fender skirt. Here is the rear of the driver's door. You see rust coming through. Here's the passenger's door, a little bit of rust coming through on the front edge. 
and with and on the rear edge. We have the typical General Motors rust near the seam of the vinyl top. And we have rust along the lower edge of the trunk lid showing up. And this was the only rust area I could see on the eBay pictures. This was the only, th only part that actually showed up on the pictures on eBay. And I asked him about that. We'll talk about that later or somewhere in this video. Now I'm going to go around the car with this magnet. It's not scientific. I don't have a thickness meter, but I'll show you that even the rust spots will, will uh, attract the magnet. So it's just a very, um, I should say, not, I wouldn't say superficial rust because it needs to be cut out and it needs to be repaired properly with welding and a new uh, patch panel. But uh, there's still metal there. It's not uh, Bondo per se. It's where the rust is throwing through. So let's do this. You can see the rear quarter. Very good. You can see even where the rust is. Strong attraction. Even though this car has no cup holders, the magnet is still attracted to it. Here on this bubble, all along the door. The dog leg of the front fender. Going back on this side. Dog leg of the front fender. The little rusty area in the door. Right on the rust area of the door. Oh, a little bit of, little bit of Bondo here, apparently. Here, but not back here. It's my condom. The reason I put that, I showed it to you earlier, the exhaust rattles and I rattled it for you when I was under the car. I put that rubber on there so you could hear the car running without the annoying exhaust hitting the fender. I don't want you thinking there's anything wrong with the engine, there, which there isn't as far as I can see. The rust bubbling on the trunk. So. The reason I'm so now I, I've had this motto on my uh, videos where I, I say I sell no car before it's time, meaning I take care of everything so it's a turnkey car for you. We don't have to worry about anything as far as something working or, or something being wrong with it. This car is a completely different animal. I bought this car. The person who sold it to me misled me, and it's my fault for being such an idiot. Um, it's his fault for lying. I mean, he ought not lied in many cases to the questions I had to ask him. But um, it's a buyer beware situation with a car. And I didn't beware enough. I bought enough, but I didn't aware enough. <laughs> so. Um, this car was sold to me as a nice driver. And I guess, you know, if, if you're somebody who wants to drive an old car to work every day and don't really care about uh, the car other than, hey, it's cool, man, let's jump in the car, smoke some weed, and go to work, yeah, then it's fine. 
But that's not my personality. I like cars to be, when I think of, of a nice driver, I think of a number two car that's really, really nice, uh, that would um, win an amateur car show, but it's very reliable, you can drive it, and you could drive it to Denver without worrying about it, uh, other than carrying a few extra spare parts, because uh, they're hard to find if, if, say, a starter goes out or an alternator goes out, but um, easy to change when you're on the road. I've done it many times on cars throughout the years. But this car, um, I would want to do quite a bit of work for it to, it to make everything work. Uh, the seller did two things for me. One he volunteered and one I asked for, and he did. He rebuilt the brakes, new wheel cylinders, new uh, brake linings, new brake lines or hoses. The brakes have been done. You don't have to worry about that. The tires are, let's see, seven years old, so they're getting a little bit old, but the tread is still very good. I would say at least 50% tread. That's not something that you'd have to do immediately. That'd be in your budget later after you, whatever you else you do. The, everything is original, numbers matching, except for he put in a different Buick distributor. The original one that came with the car will be included. Uh, other things that bother me that I would want to do is I want to re-chrome and repolish all the bright work. Both the front and the rear bumper have been not severely bent, but sprung a little bit. Uh, this this should be it. This gap should be even. This side is not as bad, but this gap should be even. And what I suspect is it was uh, right on the nose. Uh, you know, he, he probably, someone hit him or he hit something right on the nose and it went bing, it splayed it out a little bit. <laughs> Under the hood is original. The, the um, transmission fluid, I think it's extra virgin oil because it smells perfect. There's no burn, it's bright pink. It transmission shifts perfectly. There's no um, leaking other than, this, other than ages, you know, ages of seeping and road dirt, which you'll find on a car that hasn't really been cleaned regularly. But there's no dri drips on the ground, uh, transmission or engine. Um, this car having 113,000 miles, this engine is very good condition. The carburetor will need to be rebuilt. The 69 and 70 Rivieras had electric fuel pumps in the gas tank. It has a, a fuel pressure regulator here. I would go through the fuel system before I would drive it to uh, Grandma's house on Thanksgiving. Um, the it has cruise control. I have no idea if it works, and the reason I do not know it, if it works is a little plastic grommet-like thing that goes on this ball, and this chain subsequently goes on it. That grommet I actually have in the house is broken. It, it does not work, so I cannot test the cruise control. Um, the windshield washer, the, the hoses are not connected. I could suppose I could test that real quick before uh, we're done here. I don't expect it to work. The power steering fluid is clean. Of course, the brake fluid has all been replaced. Um, the engine, the, 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 the motor part of the engine seems to be completely sound. There is the original cork. Um, rocker arm gaskets which are crispy hard and it does seep some oil onto the exhaust and you can smell burning oil um, from that. I'm not going to start doing anything. I'm not going to do anything this car. Nothing. It's like one owner guy, uh, car guy says, I could fix it for you but maybe you want to fix it. <laughs> the thing is I don't want to fix it. Had this car had 
a rust-free body with good paint like it was told to me, I would have done, I would have kept the car and restored, gotten everything nice and clean and everything working perfectly. All the belts and hoses and uh, vacuum lines and fluid lines, everything all replaced. I'm not going to do any of that. I'm not going to do any of that because I don't want to, it, it would be stupid of me to do any of that because I expect or suspect, I should say, not expect, but I suspect that anyone who's interested in this car is going to do a complete restoration and you'll have to basically take apart the things I've done anyway. So it'd be a waste of motion as far as I'm concerned to do little things. This, will, this car will go up on your trailer, it'll go, you know, around town a little bit, but I would not trust it as is to run. Uh, I wouldn't take my kid to school in it because he'd probably have to walk halfway, I think. Maybe. Maybe not. But I don't know. <laughs> so, and it's not because there's anything wrong with the engine. I think it's just a, um, the fuel system might need to be worked on a little bit before I would trust it very far. Uh, you know, it, it, Pull the engine out, clean it, regasket it. I don't think you'll have to do anything other than that, because you want it to look nice, right? You want to pull the engine to, to clean up the firewall and things like that. Some people might not even care under the hood. Just rework the um, fuel system, um, and uh, it runs good. Sometimes it, it seems like it runs out of gas, and then it runs good. As long as, it, as long as it's getting gas, it runs perfectly. But sometimes it runs out of gas, you have to wait. And I don't know exactly why it is. I think it's the uh, fuel pump going bad. That would be the logic. Or maybe the fuel filter is plugged. It's been sitting so long. In fact, the guy who bought, I bought it from is a flipper. Not the one that's uh, on... T <laughs> His name is Flipper, Flipper. <laughs> lives in a world full of wonder. Anyway, it's not that guy. It's the other guy, the guy that uh, doesn't really care about cars. He sees an opportunity to make money, and he flips the car. Anyway, he told me it was found in an out shed or a machine shed, you'd call it. Um, and it's probably sat for quite some time. The gas, Maybe it's just the gasoline is really bad. I did put a couple of gallons of regular in it, and it, you, amazingly, it doesn't ping. Um, of course, I haven't checked the timing. Maybe it's retarded. You know, unlike your sister, it's really retarded. And uh, so, let's uh, see if there's anything under here I can talk about. The air conditioner has been done. It works, it's cold, it's top notch, it's original R12. All of the equipment's original. You can see that the uh, PO pilot operated actuated valve, POA valve is uh, all rusty, original. Surface rust, of course. Um, the cruise control mechanisms are all intact. I don't know if it works, as I told you. Uh, it needs, in my opinion, a complete restoration. If you think you can get by without doing a complete restoration and whatever, be my guest. Oh, I never give it enough. Um, you can see from 20 feet, it looks pretty damn nice. It's original coronet gold. It matches the uh, color paint code on the data plate. I checked the engine serial number. It matches the dash serial number, the title serial number. It's got the proper, I think it's SP or SF. It's a the 370 horse that came out in the full-size cars. I mean, you can tell that really virtually no bolt has ever been turned on this car other than the bumpers that were removed. Uh, the trunk lining is, is missing. Here at the, here the rear bumper. The rear bumper was hit in a little bit more than the front bumper. 
but it's symmetric. I mean, it's, it's even. It's like both of them were hit right square in the middle and affected both sides almost the same. Um, it is a fairly highly optioned car. Power, now the, okay, power windows, that's an issue. The power windows do work. And the driver's side works pretty good, but the rest of them have not been used enough, and I think that the rollers need to be, we need to take out the door panels and re-lubricate uh, the rollers. I believe on this car, the rollers are still metal, not plastic, and they have high, the high, dire need of lubrication because the windows just go down and go back up. Yeah, so I'm not going to put the windows down for you. Who knows, they might not go back up uh, before the motors burn out. I don't think it's the weak motors. I think it's truly the rollers are, and the tracks really are binding up uh, because of lack of lubrication. Um, they put a new carpet in. I guess, oh, you know, for some reason the carpet bothered them more than anything else. <laughs> so they put a new carpet in it and it's pretty nice looking. But they didn't bother putting in the new carpet on the door panels, which usually you get a kit. You can buy a kit that has enough material to finish that off, but they didn't. The seats are dirty. They're not bad. This is one thing a person can buy with. I love the grain on this um, on the seats. This year, Riviera and many years of the Riviera had two or three different levels of trim. This is the highest level. Each of the three levels came with either all vinyl or vinyl and cloth, whether they be bu buckets or bench. This is the highest level and it's vinyl and uh, it's quite nice. You can see that the colors are different. My Electra has the same problem, but my elect Electra is symmetrical. Only the center panel and the center armrest has a different color. These are haphazard. My theory being is they came from different batches of vinyl back when they built the car. And those batches of vinyl looked very, very close. So it wasn't an issue. But as the vinyl aged, they aged differently. So that's my theory. I can't prove it. But think about it for a minute. There's no way the factory would do this on purpose. They do a lot of things on purpose, but... This would never pass. Um, it, I guess, a cruise control, power windows, power seat, power seats working. It's a six. Let's see. Yeah, it's a six-way power seat. That's an upgrade from the four-way power seat. Um, What other options? Uh, tilt wheel. It needs and the steering wheel needs to be either restored or what most people do is put a Buick Sport wheel on there. I would tend to spend the money to restore it, but some people like that Sport wheel better anyway. Um, the fake wood is in better shape than most. But you can see that the uh, pot metal dash is less than ideal. The, the padded dash is in excellent condition. Kind of surprising. Um, yeah, that's not bad. The seat's rather comfortable. I like these seats better than my Electra. This, than, than my Electra seats are almost like new but this particular design the strato bench seat i think is more comfortable than the the regular bench seat even though my electric all electric convertibles that year were customs they were the second tier of um, quality whereas uh, the limited never came with the convertible the limited sedans and coupes uh, were the highest trim level on the on the Electra, this is the highest trim level on the on the Riviera, whether it be bucket or bench. Uh, AM FM radio does not work. I think there was a smoker here 
I'm not sure. Either that or people like to put uh, liquid in the ashtrays. But um, I can't say it's a non-smoking car, but it smells like an, an old car, which has a wonderful old car smell as far as I'm concerned. But that's personal preference. If I had an air freshener, it would be old car smell. I'm not kidding. Sometimes I'm kid. This I am serious about that. Um, it does have the owner's manual. It doesn't have it does not have the protector plate. I'm sorry. Spare tire also is the road wheels, uh, the the jack and all the jack accessories. Uh, the accessories be in the box, including the spring and the little hook that holds it down, is there. Um, Trunk looks pretty good. Oh, what can I say? I think this rust basically happens when the water settles on this stainless trim and it kind of. Uh, the underneath here, I don't see much of a problem. The drain holes here are still there. Uh, the drain tubes are still there and there's no real rust in the pockets of the hinges so that's a common problem not happening here so uh, I'm not a body man I'm not uh, I don't weld I don't do body work I'm not good at the uh, we call it um, cleaning and making everything nice and perfect so uh, I, I would have to pay someone to do that work and I, I can't I'm not going to do that. The trunk no dents from slamming it there's nice and smooth all the panels that, other than the rust nice and smooth and clean and properly shaped all the uh, factory stampings look good yeah, I'm trying to find a few good things to tell you about the car. I, I want to make sure you know everything about the car, so I don't want to... Uh, I ten, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm tending to tell you everything bad about the car, which is, I think in Salesman 101 school, they tell you not to do that. So, I didn't go to that school. So I'm going to tell you everything I can. Um, Again, everything's shaped well, Every, there's no ripples or... Um, <laughs> once you take care of the rust patch, looks like the rest of the body work w wouldn't be that uh, big of a deal as far as fine-tuning everything. Um, it's pretty much complete, other than the air shocks don't, don't have the compressor and the mechanisms. Uh, that's the only thing is, that was intentionally taken out. The shocks were still there, and I don't quite understand why it holds up the car. I guess the rear springs are so strong that uh, the shocks do very little as far as holding up the car, but it's weird. The front shocks are still the original spiral GM shocks. Putting new shocks on it would greatly improve the ride and handling. The ball joints, I did the the, you know, the chest on the ball joints, they very solid. Looks like the ball joints are, are top notch. The, um, you can see weather checking on the upper, I'll show you, I guess, a good idea. On the upper bushings, but all the upper bushings are centered. There's no slop in the upper bushings. Let's see if I can get um, a shot at that here for you. You can see here, I don't know if the, if the camera's picking that up. And you can see it's oh, yeah. cracking, but it's centered. It's, there's no uh, slop there yet. That will have to be eventually replaced, but right now it's not bad. There is a little bit of play in the wheel when I shake it this way, which is indication of the tie, uh, tie rods are probably um, a little bit iffy. Going this way, it's hard as a rock. I mean, there's no you can't even move the uh, ball joints at all. So the original um, on these on these older cars, the original 
ball joints and tie rod ends and everything were pretty durable. So I like to make sure that's taken care of, but it's not something you'd have to immediately do. But if you're going to restore the car anyway, you do everything. So I don't know what else to tell you about it. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about what the guy told me when I sold it. Uh, in fact, I have the eBay article. I'm actually going to read here to his description, and then I will tell you a little bit about our conversations. So uh, you can you can always uh, contribute to my GoFundMe, where uh, Rod needs to buy some more cars. Uh, you can donate whatever you want. Of course, that's a joke. So, <laughs> if you buy this car, it would help me. You get a car, I get some money. Um, is there anything I'm missing? I'm not sure. Windshield wipers work. Horn does not work. Probably because the steering wheel is so screwed up. Um, oh, the hood is nice and flat. There's no ripples or dings in it to speak of. You know, nobody danced on it or anything. No idiot put his elbows on the fenders when he was working on it, so there's no problems there. Of course, these older cars have thicker sheet metal anyway, but... Uh, yeah. Okay. We'll meet you inside and the table. I'm going to read to you the description on the eBay ad that enticed me to buy the car. And then I'll also tell you some of the conversations that he and I had while I was deciding whether I wanted the car. Uh, it's written something like a Batman TV show. Zap! Pow! Bam! So, anyway. Uh, background on him, he told me he was a corporate lawyer for Disneyland, so I think he's well versed in the art of not lying, per se, but not telling you the truth at the same time. Although he did, as far as I'm concerned, lie when I asked him a few questions, and certainly withhold information. The whole truth and nothing but was not involved. So. Um, I'm not doing this to make you feel sorry for me. I'm doing this to, uh, to for the potential buyer. And uh, it happens to a lot of people. Maybe this will be somewhat educational. Here I am at my age. I'm still getting getting uh, scammed. So it can happen, you know. I haven't paid any money to that Nigerian princess yet. But, you know, that could happen. So this is the, um, and I will emphasize the all caps for you in my voice if I can. Here it goes. What a great and beautiful design and a one year only design. This is the only year that Riviera by Buick has fender skirts. Fabulous design lines. A wonderful driver that has awesome power of the 455 cubic inch 370 horsepower Buick engine. She has a great and very rare color combination. Coronet gold with a white vinyl top and white interior. She also has five Buick road wheels and no serious rust at all. I think I would emphasize that. Maybe he's a little bit ashamed, so he kind of kept that small. My words. She's the very best price, 99.5% rust-free Riviera and the very best motor and highest horsepower rating on this site. This is, this is the best price rust-free car on eBay. Can you believe that? I did. Not really. I didn't believe that, but there's a lot of really nice Rivieras on eBay. <laughs> She has, of course, power steering, power brakes, power windows, power driver's seat. Well, it's a bench seat, so it's a power seat. <sighs> the whole seat's power. It's like you don't break the power, the, the driver's part off from the passenger's part when you hit the power button. All right. And all in working condition. She also has factory air conditioning as well as factory AM, FM, stereo. I will have the AC, oh, I will have the AC working in ice cold if she sells. He did that. That's the true thing. He did that. Buy with confidence as we have 100% feedback. 
not only, yeah, he does have 100% feedback. And not only that, but it's also 100% positive <laughs> that he had going for him. That was part that sucked me in. It can, he can, you know, it can happen anytime to anybody. We welcome in-person inspections as long as a party looking is very knowledgeable about collector's cars. Thanks and good luck with your possible purchase. That's the end. Um, I'm a hell of a lot more knowledgeable than this son of a bitch is. My problem, my failure, is I didn't fly to inspect it myself before I paid for it. Okay, the conversations we had. Um, he's getting old and he wants to get rid of all of his cars. And yet, I found out between the time I bought the car and the time it was delivered, he went to an auction to buy a bunch of cars. And when I got the title, it's, it was on the title, it told you how old the title is. He only had the car for a month before he put it on eBay. He doesn't know anything about this car. To him, it's a token. He buys it at a low price. He sells it at a high price. That's his, you know, that's what most car people do. I'm an idiot. I buy high and sell low, you know, so. I think this would be the last time I can afford to do that. Anyway, I asked some very specific questions. It says, does the cruise control work? Oh, I don't know. I don't, I, I don't ever use it. That's not even hooked up. He didn't even, he d one, either did not know it was not even hooked up, and still is it, by the way, or he just didn't care. I asked him um, if uh, one other thing worked. I can't remember. Oh, uh, let me think. It's coming to me. Um, I don't remember at the moment. It doesn't, whatever it was, it, I told you all the things that work and don't work. He says all the the power windows work, and it's true, but as we just, as I discussed on the video, they will need lubrication for them to work properly. So the motors are working, the switches are working. Uh, so that's one of those, the whole truth, nothing but the truth omissions. <laughs> one of many. Um, but the part that is the killer for me is he told me he um, winters in Scottsdale, Arizona. That's probably true, since uh, he he's a, probably a multimillionaire as far as I know, just by whatever I was able to learn from him. But uh, being a corporate lawyer for Disneyland, he'd probably make a few bucks. He doesn't do any work himself on the car. He doesn't know nothing about cars. He has everything done by someone else, which well, you know, a lot of people in his class, that's, that's their life. So there's nothing wrong with that. Maybe if I had a lot of money, I wouldn't do anything, but I like doing stuff, so I don't know. Um, here's the problem. I noticed on the eBay pictures a little bit of rust on the rear left corner of the trunk lid. That shows up in the pictures, and I mentioned that. I said, I, I noticed a little bit of rust there. So yeah, that's, that's, that's the rust on the car. That's, that's it. He says, this car is as clean as any car you find in Southern Arizona. And um, there are cars in Desert Valley Junkyard in Phoenix and Maricopa and Black Canyon City that don't have the rust this car has. Fortunately, as we saw in the video, there's nothing structurally wrong with this car. It's a very restorable car. Um, I uh, was prepared to do the suspension and the detailing and, and getting everything working. I, in fact, I had a, a list of things I was going to buy, uh, including a Keter core that was bypassed and uh, shocks and springs and ready, queued for ready to buy when I got that car. Sometimes I buy parts before I get the car. This time I didn't. I'm glad I did, well, held off. Uh, I uh, was able to control my impulses in that respect. Um, but I cannot afford to have this car, the rust repair on the outer body. I cannot afford it. I'm not, I don't want to do it. Someone who has that talent can do it and uh, have a wonderful restorable car 
to start with. It's, it's not a parse car, it's a nice car. If you get the fuel system working, it'll be a nice driver. As far as driving it, you may not want to be you know, proud of it by the, because of the rust. I, I consider rust embarrassing. To me, rust is like um, having zits all over your nose. You know, I just can't, you don't want to see your, show yourself in public. That's how I feel about rust on a car. Even if it's superficial or, or just uh, service outer panel rust, I just, uh, it's just my fetish. I just can't, can't do it. So uh, that's why I'm selling it. And I'm contemplating, he, he professes to be a good Christian. And my dad has always said, and I've come to learn often, that people who emphasize that think they have the license to screw you or win your confidence. They have that use that as a way to win your confidence. So you kind of throw uh, um, critical thinking out the window a little bit. <laughs> I was talking to the, the, the broker who shipped it, who, who she deals with them quite often. She's not very happy with the guy and uh, she, I'm not gonna tell you too many personal things about it. But uh, I took a, I took I took a gamble, and I said I would I would never do that to somebody because I'm a good atheist, <laughs> and she she thought that was pretty funny, and <laughs> maybe I offended you, but you know I care about this much if I did, so um, I am who I am, like Popeye they said, and that's all that I am, and as Shakespeare said, to thine own self be true, and that's the best advice I can give you today. So I might give him a negative feedback on eBay, if only for, I don't think it would do any good because he has a whole history of positive feedback. I will probably look like some disgruntled idiot by giving negative feedback. Because there are a lot of those who give negative feedback on eBay who don't understand anything. And so, uh, I, I, you know, I, I may not give that feedback because I don't want to, look like this disgruntled idiot who doesn't understand anything about cars. Yeah, I have a little bit of pride and I seriously doubt if that would really impact him anyway. But I might add a link to my video to show you the listing so you know who he is and you can decide what you think, you know. So uh, I'm not out for vengeance. It's uh, like I said, buyer beware. And I didn't beware enough. So let that be a lesson to one and all out there, even you youngsters, I dare you, millennials, and you Generation Z types. You know, this uh, manly car it was born a manly car, and it can never be a woman car, no matter what. All right, talk to you later.